this is the point at which we initially get to circle Mercury. Out there, at the actual front of our planetary gathering, lies Mercury, a minimal, uninhabited planet encompassed by a catch of interest and mystery. At a basic look, nothing gives off an impression of being compelling for this planet, at any rate, progressing assessments by NASA have uncovered some amazing divulgences about Mercury that no one expected. A part of the dazzling revelations, including data from the James Webb Telescope, has begun banter within the scientific community, with many demonstrating the likelihood of extraterrestrial species existing on the planet. Amidst the fierce revelations and peculiar plot theories, another strategy is emerging among established analysts. It is the pivotal procedure to strip Mercury of its wonderful cloak and reveal its dim secrets once and for all. What wonderful secrets have analysts uncovered about Mercury, and what plans does the scholarly community have for this bizarre astronomical neighbor? In this video, as the Webb Telescope finally found what NASA was disguising on Mercury, our planetary gathering is something other than a characteristic collection of planets swinging in endless motion. Each of the eight planets that make up this astounding ring structure has enchanting features of its own. Regardless of the way that planets like Jupiter and Mars might have taken the spotlight with their stunning significance, another interesting planetary body that gives off an impression of being lost in the bunch is Mercury. It is the planet that lies at the very top of the list of planets organized by closeness to the Sun, its distance from the Sun is a straightforward 58 million kilometers, compared to Earth's 150 million kilometers, Mercury is also very minimal compared to Earth measuring just 3,000 kilometers in diameter. Thanks to its small size, Mercury is the speediest planet to complete its orbit around the Sun, at an amazing speed of 47 kilometers per second. The planet completes a full transformation in 59 days, while a year on Mercury is only 88 days, or 90 days on Earth. Mercury's small size and gigantic speed are just two of its hypnotizing features. From a distance on the huge map, it even seems like a decent planet. The little planet has perpetually been beguiling to established scientists, however, for no justifiable reason, it hasn't gained as much attention as most of its countless neighbors. The first recorded view of Mercury was in 265 BC. Early stargazers like Kepler in 1639 attempted to observe the planet, however, all the scholarly community in these early times had bits and pieces of data as their investigation was undeniably coordinated using insufficient scientific equipment and old telescopes. It was shortly after the 1960s that truly significant data about Mercury began to surface, thanks to the efforts of NASA. Several years ago, NASA uncovered the first authentic pictures of Mercury to the public. These larger-than-life photographs showed Mercury as a heavenly encapsulation of gloriousness and unpredictability, however, it did not come easily. In fact, extensive stretches of planning and constructed work were needed to explore Mercury. Scientists have had a difficult time studying Mercury as they do with other planets due to its proximity to the Sun. The Sun's unforgiving rays and brilliant light can damage optical instruments like telescopes when they observe Mercury for extended periods. As such, scientists can only look at the tiny planet for a few minutes at a time to prevent damage to equipment. Even the James Webb Telescope cannot direct its gaze toward the planet for long. This closeness to the Sun makes it quite astounding how this, the most nearly insignificant planet, is actually more difficult to study than the farther planets. Due to the temperature and gravitational pull from the Sun, sending a probe to Mercury is more akin to an implosion mission than a grand adventure. The probe must acclimate to the extreme temperature and gravitational forces, otherwise, it will not survive. It might surprise you to know that Mercury shoots around the Sun at an unbelievable speed of 30 meters per second. This breakneck speed creates challenges for rockets attempting to survey the planet or land on its surface. Thus far, two space missions have targeted Mercury, Mariner 10, launched on November 3, 1973, and Messenger, launched on August 3, 2004. These missions, both conceived by NASA, are the primary sources of virtually all the information we have about Mercury today. For instance, Mariner 10 conducted three flybys, each revealing the astonishingly cratered surface of Mercury and also shedding light on its magnetic field. If you're contemplating this, 
the spacecraft was equipped with two telescopes, spectrometers, a magnetometer, and a plasma analyzer. NASA aimed to gather as much data as possible from the Mariner 10 visit to Mercury. As it turned out, the probe steadily made its way toward the little speedy planet, using gravity assist from Venus. As Mariner 10 advanced toward Mercury, scientists were dumbfounded to see the wild surface of Mercury, which was riddled with countless pits and ridges, similar to our moon. The photos from Mariner were shocking, as Mercury turned out to be nothing like what experts had ever expected. Besides the extreme planetary surface, the spacecraft also detected a weak magnetic field and an oddly large core. In total, Mariner took over 2,700 pictures of Mercury, providing scientists with an unmatched perspective of this captivating celestial body. The second flyby of Mariner occurred on September 21, 1974, during which it captured images of the southern polar region of the planet. The last flyby of Mariner 10 was in spring 1975, after which it ceased transmitting signals to Earth. Later assessments revealed that the spacecraft had drained its supply of gas and was unable to make additional orbits. The remarkable work of Mariner 10 was continued 30 years later when Messenger was launched to the relatively close planet. Unlike its predecessor, Messenger did not merely conduct flybys but also managed to orbit the planet. As a result, scientists were able to gather more extensive and interesting data about Mercury. Equipped with captivating pictures, NASA sought more significant information with this mission. This time, it wasn't just about pictures, the agency aimed to learn about the atmospheric conditions and chemical composition of the planet. NASA also aimed to gather data on the planet's magnetic field and delve into its geologic history and planetary core. As you can anticipate, the messenger probe was loaded with all the essential instruments it would need for this remarkable mission. Intriguingly, the probe made three orbits around Mercury, during which it took around 200,000 photos of the planet. These photographs were remarkable since, unlike previous missions, Mariner mission, they incorporated the two sides of the planet during the core mission. The test might go into the planet, circling at about 215,000 kilometers over the planet's surface. This area engaged the test to take pictures of both the light and dull sides of Mercury, resulting in significant analysis of the photos and differentiating them. Data from the space instruments indicated that our dear sister planet had strangely high concentrations of calcium and magnesium on its night side. Additionally, the magnetic field of the planet is apparently strangely deformed, appearing to be more grounded from the northern hemisphere. This particular characteristic of the magnetic field bewildered scientists for a long time until significant assessment and examination were conducted to uncover the mystery behind this anomaly. However, when the secrets were finally revealed, it sent shockwaves throughout the scientific community. You see, Mercury's odd and peculiar magnetic field is all in light of the fact that of how the planet formed at its core. Magnetic fields on planets are generated from the reactions that occur in their cores. Take Earth as an example, the deepest parts of the world's center contain liquid iron. However, towards the inner layer, this iron changes states. The strong, ongoing solidifying of liquid iron in the core causes a magnetic field. At the day's end, strong fields are being outlined in our planet's core regularly. As liquid iron cools and solidifies into solid iron, it interacts with the surrounding liquid iron. As this happens, and as the Earth rotates, a sort of convective current is created. The end result produces electric currents, generating a gigantic magnetic field radiating into space. This is the positive method of action for Earth, and how its magnetic field lines are produced. For Mercury, however, it's a different ball game. In all honesty, Mercury's method of movement is so bizarre that it left specialists thoroughly bewildered. A new study led by Howa from the University of California, Los Angeles, found that iron transitions from liquid to solid at the core's outer boundary. This is entirely different from Earth, where the change from liquid to solid occurs at the core's inner boundary. How could this be? We had figured out how Earth functions and Mercury is another rocky planet with an iron core, so we assumed it would work the same way. However, it doesn't work that way. It's like a snowstorm, where the snow forms at the highest part of the cloud, the center of the cloud, 
in the lower part of the cloud as well. Our examination of Mercury's magnetic field exhibits that iron is snowing throughout this fluid that is energizing Mercury's magnetic field. Further investigation showed that Howe's assessment was consistent with data from NASA's Mariner mission. The dazzling discovery led analysts to acknowledge that planets have more than one way to generate magnetic fields. Although the cores of Mercury and Earth contain the same constituents, like sulfur and iron, specific aberrations in these two planets can create surprising differences, as seen in their magnetic fields. At any rate, the uniqueness between Earth and Mercury works out significantly beyond its magnetic field. You see, there are a huge number of various rules that this great body doesn't seem to follow. For example, analysts were baffled to see that temperatures on the planet could reach highs of over 430 degrees Celsius in the day but drop to as low as minus 170 degrees Celsius at night. What is happening is attributed to Mercury's deficit of an atmosphere. Unlike Earth, Mercury has a petite exosphere. More horrendous still, this exosphere is essentially composed of particles sent off its surface by meteoroid impacts and solar winds. Analysts believe that since Mercury is excessively hot, anything that would have formed a real atmosphere over it gets quickly scattered into space. Additionally, since it misses the mark on climate, the side of Mercury that is facing the Sun gets influenced with great force. And here's where it gets really staggering, one entire day on Mercury is as extensive as its year, while one year spans 88 Earth days. One day, as a matter of fact, lasts 176 Earth days. So, this suggests one side of Mercury gets continuously bombarded with ridiculous power and sunshine, while the night side hardly gets any. These two factors, the absence of atmosphere and the extremely long day, are the critical reasons behind the absurd temperature instabilities. The hypnotizing temperatures on Mercury have long caused speculations to go off the deep end in the scholarly community. A magnetic field and a harsh soil structure make Mercury, in any case, a potentially inhabitable planet. The crazy temperatures would make life on Mercury essentially impossible. At any rate, specific questionable features of this obscure planet have left many to consider the possibility of finding life. Mercury in this has birthed questions, like envisioning a situation in which Mercury is, in actuality, inhabitable and possible living expecting it. Things could exist in the world up to this point. The external layer of Mercury has shown to be very interesting, comparative to our moon, the planet shows up to contain a couple of impact cavities. The moon has for quite a while been bewildered with conversations and cannot hypotheses of outcasts because of its strangely immense number of whom take jumbling shapes like vaults. Though no proof exists of such extraterrestrial moon bases, many have likewise begun to point fingers at Mercury, proposing the presence of such species. In spite of the way that impact openings are for the most part the weakness of space rocks, it isn't vast that some can be achieved by transport. For example, NASA's Corer test caused an enormous pit when it crashed into Mercury's surface on April 30, 2015. Today, there are inestimable pits, breaks, edges, furthermore, even traces of magma launches. Hence, envision a situation in which a piece of these various openings were achieved by other similar extraterrestrial rockets or untouchable development. A couple of other dazzling real facts about Mercury have furthermore incited neurotic thoughts, like the ice water stores viewed as in the lower part of the depressions at the north and south poles of the planet. Truth be told, another intelligent review from the Planetary Investigation Foundation showed that the planet's north pole could have the best conditions for excessive biostructures. These legitimate districts include circumstances change comparable to those on Earth that are disguised under the planet's surface. This staggering end was drawn from the examination of the photos from NASA's Corer test, which were shaped into a guide using this data. Scientists observed that there are certain salt ice sheets on the planet that are stacked with eccentric combinations to support the presence of biolife. Consequently, without a doubt, even inside the severe environment and the deadly area to the sun, these experts accept that there is an opportunity that untouchables or some sort of biodesigns can be found on Mercury if we dig deep enough. Quite possibly of the most excellent achievements of NASA's Corer test is that it sorted out some way to draft a guide of Mercury, 
capturing in each one of the openings and bowls that were in the world's surface. This gave specialists at NASA an above and beyond opportunity to amass on the planet's geology. All around, whatever amount more, the test in like manner sorted out how to uncover the association of Mercury. Unexpectedly, the sad planet has a surface association of 46% oxygen, 12% magnesium, 26% silicon, 7% aluminum, and 4% calcium. Analysts also found that the planet has an unusually high abundance of shaky parts like sulfur but an inquisitively low proportion of iron. This disclosure lighted discussions inside the coherent local area since it set Mercury aside as an alternative planet from the rest of the planets in the planetary gathering. Generally, planets in the planetary bunch are known to be more copious in iron than sulfur, especially in their core. Seeing a planet that didn't adhere to this guideline was extremely astonishing and touched off interest in Mercury all things considered. Actually, specialists moreover saw something unprecedented about the planet, it had an inquisitive dusty ring about it. This, yet again, lighted disputes among various experts inside. Some laid out that specialists were worried considering the way that Mercury seemed, by all accounts, to be unreasonably little to have a planetary ring. In our entire close-by planet bunch, only Jupiter and Saturn are known for their rings. Jupiter's rings are exceptionally not numerous and faint and were first perceived in 1979 by Voyager 1. Saturn, on the other hand, has an unmistakable ring system that can be